It is the Michigan Football Report. We are filming this live Thursday. If you're watching it later, we're going to put this video on demand either Thursday night, depending on how good I did with my uh, six beers in 15 minutes, or early on Friday. I want to talk some recruiting. Uh, talk a little bit of uh, postseason stuff that's going on. A lot happening with some of Michigan's football players, coaches, etc. But most importantly, maybe for me at least, is recruiting. And there's so much to talk about because this is the last weekend for anyone to visit before the early signing day, which is coming up in six days next Wednesday, December 15th. And a new prospect has emerged for the Wolverines. That man's name is Derek Moore. He's a top 100 four-star defensive lineman. Outside guy, pass rusher. Some said, hey, he kind of reminds of David Ajabo, same, uh, uh, same playing style. One inter couple interesting notes in this. Been decommitted to Oklahoma. Uh, uh, been committed to Oklahoma. Decommitted when R Lincoln Riley left them uh, the weekend of the Michigan-Ohio State game, Thanksgiving weekend. Decommitted right after that. Visiting Michigan tomorrow on Friday. And he is in Ole Miss right now. He's visiting Ole Miss. He could technically, I guess, take another official visit early next week uh, if he's able to fit in for a day. Some people have rumored like USC and some other schools. We'll see if that happens. He's still certainly going to consider Oklahoma. They've got Brett Venables. Brent Venables, one of the best defensive minds in the game. But this gives Michigan the opportunity to sell him a top 100 prospect to come to Michigan to commit. But he could also just look around, take his visit to Ole Miss today, be in Michigan tomorrow, and then just decide to either wait till February, enroll, commit in January. It's tough to say since he decommitted so late, he hasn't really put out any sort of timeline. But the thing that's going potentially here in Michigan, there's really three things that are going in Michigan's favor with this recruitment of Derek Moore. Number one is Michigan could have the best two defensive ends or two of the top three or four or five defensive ends in the country right now playing for him. It's always good. That's why Oklahoma gets good quarterbacks, typically under Lincoln Riley. Ohio State, Heisman finalist, for running back, but quarterback. I'm going to go there. That'll be me in a few years, right? Same thing going on here. Number two, same high school as Blake Corum. Same high school as Nakai Hill Green. Two contributors, uh, big contributors with Michigan's football team. High school teammates of them. And Biff Pogey. Remember his son Henry played for Michigan back, what, seven years ago or so. He's been a Harbaugh guy. He's now in his second stint with Michigan in a not off-the-field role. He's a... Baltimore High School, a legendary coach, multiple state championships, multiple schools. But there is this little thing hanging out there that I'm unsure about. I haven't had a chance to research it if it's going to affect Michigan. But the NCAA put in a rule about four or five years ago. In my opinion, it was geared towards Jim Harbaugh after the Chris Partridge and then Rashawn Gary and Jabril Peppers and all that good stuff where their high school, one of their high school coaches was coaching, but he was off the field, whatever it is. Um, and then Partridge got – you know, uh, promoted in the future, but he was recruiting guy at the beginning, is that high school coaches can go to college and get a position coach or a coordinator role. That's fine. But if you're going to take an off-field job, what they're trying to avoid is the buddy system. Hey, I'll give your coach a job. I'll give your grandpa a job, your dad, your, your uncle, your brother a job. Um, yeah, just one of these analyst roles that nobody cares about. The NCAA wants these jobs to mean something and don't want uh, schools to just pay somebody $100,000 under the table to come to Michigan. Biff Pogey was his high school coach. He's now at Michigan. It's been less than two years since that would happen. The old rule said that was two years. I don't know if the NCAA has changed anything with NIL and transfer for rules. I haven't got a chance to look into that deeply, so if you guys know, let me know here in the chat and uh, we'll keep it rolling. But with this re you know, recruitment coming in, Michigan could land a top 100 guy down the stretch that none of us were expecting. I want to know from you guys, who is your favorite all-time Michigan recruit to follow? All right, and I'm not just talking about when they got to Michigan. I'm talking about their actual recruitment, the entire saga of them coming to Michigan, maybe even good or bad. You might get hit with a pinned comment here on your ad break here on YouTube. So what I'll do is pin this comment below the video for those of you watching on demand. Go down, answer the question, scroll back up. We'll be back with more Michigan Football Report. Josh Gaddis is a name to watch for Virginia. And if you watched our show on Wednesday, I said, I didn't think Virginia was the one that was going to happen. It seemed to me that the tea leaves were, if Gaddis was going to move on from Michigan, potentially the job could have been the Duke Blue Devils. And the guy I thought would take Virginia is Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator for Clemson. Right? It seems like Clemson has kind of hit a peak where they've accomplished all they can. Uh, one of their OCs went to South Florida a couple years ago. Brent Venables, now their other longtime assistant coach, uh, Tony Elliott. But in the last few hours... There's been a lot of reports that the Tony Elliott Virginia marriage could be falling apart. They were going after Penn State's defensive coordinator a few days ago. That didn't happen for some reason. Josh Gass played at Wake Forest in the ACC, grew up in North Carolina, so it's not too far away. It's geographically advantageous to him. 
coached at Penn State for a long time, five, six, seven seasons with Penn State uh, as well. And he coached at Tennessee in the, the state of Tennessee as well. So he's got a lot of geographical uh, familiarity with that area. This one is now interesting because I thought it'd be Duke, Virginia. Virginia is a higher profile job in football than Duke is, of course. I think they'd be the equivalent. What do you think the Big Ten equivalent of, 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 uh, of Virginia is, Brett? Um, it's kind of tough to say. Yeah, maybe Purdue, right? Um, yeah, middle of the pack. Maybe like a, I feel like they have a higher ceiling than Maryland, but uh, maybe Minnesota may be a good uh, option. They have come some spikes and a lot of down seasons as well. But keep an eye out for this one, all right? Um, all the national college football guys who kind of report on these things, keep their ears to the ground with agents, are all reporting this afternoon that this is one to watch. I had written off Virginia as a potential uh, for taking Gaddis. We'll see if anything materializes in the next few days. I hope that Gaddis would still be around for the playoff if he did take a head coaching job, but you never know. I do think Jim Harbaugh has his next OC on staff if Gaddis were to take another job, and maybe it's win-win, right? Maybe Harbaugh is ready to move on from Gaddis, and Gaddis has had a really nice run the last two months, and he can get the head coaching job that he wants. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. We'll be on top of this one if and when it does happen. Get your Michigan football gear, folks. Big Ten Championship shirts, sweatshirts, some new playoff swag, some Michigan-Georgia stuff. It, like, sold out Saturday night into Sunday morning. Like, all the best stuff had only, like, extra small or quadruple X large in there. But they have now restocked, not every size, not every piece, but a lot of stuff is in there. And we have heard through the grapevine from Fanatics, who is our partner on these things, said, hey, put these in your show if you want people to know where to get this Michigan football Big Ten Championship college football playoff gear. Very simple link for you. They'll drop you on the page for all the items for Michigan football. Uh, Big Ten Championship, just chatsports.com slash champs. Chatsports.com slash champs. Go over there now, make a purchase, get this t-shirt, get it now, because you wait another few days, I don't think you'll get it by Christmas and maybe could even miss that window for the college football playoff on December 31st. So you saw what I was talking about yesterday, and if you didn't see the show yesterday, you saw it maybe on Twitter, or maybe you hadn't seen it at all, but C.J. Stroud, Coldridge Stroud, as I call him, because he's a kind of a quivered lip, uh, you know, chilly kid from Southern California, he made a lot of comments on Wednesday saying that, oh, it, we had the flu, and it was bad weather, and oh, they schemed us well, but we're the better team against Michigan and Oregon, and he took a lot of heat from Michigan fans. Uh, and a lot of people from Ohio State fans, actually. There's a lot of Ohio State fans like, shut up, dude. Just like take the loss. Don't be. And they're saying like, don't be like a team like Michigan and complain about JT is short, whatever. They're wrong. Blake Corum then just drops a hammer on him last night. Excuses are tools of incompetence used to build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. I mean, this sounds like a Jim Harbaugh quote. I bet Harbaugh actually typed this out, texted him. Blake, would you please tweet this for me in regards to uh, Ryan Day? And those who use them seldom specialize in anything else. This literally sounds, as I'm reading it out loud, like something Harbaugh would say, like uh, with the whole, like, George Patton through the ground, Neil Armstrong through the air, and all that stuff. So Blake Corum drops the hammer in some way. But maybe this comes back. Does Michigan just need to shut their mouth? Right? They're going to the college football playoff. They beat Ohio State. Um, you can make an argument that Michigan comes in the next season ranked higher than Ohio State with the players they're losing on offense. I don't know. Michigan's losing some, some guys on defense. But both teams have an opportunity next year to go into that game down in Columbus 11-0. If you're making these comments, just like I did, go check my Twitter feed from uh, Tuesday night, I think it was. I retweeted that tweet when Ohio State just gave the like smiling face, Trey Sermon smiling face, to the news of Harbaugh uh, getting a contract extension last last year, last December, uh, came back to bite them, right? Because they were gloating. Oh, Harbaugh back. We're going to win forever. Yeah, Blake, maybe, you know, just just take your win. You beat, you beat Ohio State pretty good. Uh, let's take that win and roll from there. All right. I want you guys to follow me on Twitter if you haven't yet because I really appreciate it. We grow the, the audience, and I'm going to make you this deal. I will follow you guys back uh, here. Anybody who follows me, I'm going to whip out the phone here um, and and take a look. We'll uh, give sh shouts throughout the live show, and then those of you watching on demand, I'll give uh, follow you guys there back on Twitter as well. So the next 15 people here live or on demand who follow me on Twitter, at James Yoder, I'm going to hit you with a follow back, and uh, hey, look, you get all Yoder all the time. I'll give some shout-outs on those in a moment, but – some other news for Michigan football dropping today. Pro Football Focus, right? It's owned by Chris Collinsworth. Um, you know, some people like him. They're very analytically driven. They're good with social media because they put out a ton of graphics and stats that most people don't know how to calculate and follow, like QB hurries and, I don't know, like block percentage. But they announced their All-American teams yesterday and their national awards today. They have named Jim Harbaugh, Pro, for his pro Football Focus, ah, Pro Football Focus's College Football Coach of the year. So congratulations to Jim Harbaugh on frankly remarkable season. 
as we think about this, and you're a Michigan fan watching, this should like really hit home to you for a second. Most people, myself included, had given up on Jim Harbaugh last November. In December, we were just ready to throw up our hands. Fire him now. He's a bum. He's never going to be to Ohio State. Never going to win the Big Ten. And he's in year six, his worst year. The team's quit on him. But think about this season here. You only have a few, you know, Donovan Edwards a couple games, J.J. McCarthy a couple games, uh, you know, Junior Colson a couple games made impact as, you know, freshman. But this team that went 2-4 and four last year had all the guys on this year's team, plus Quiddy Pay, right? Plus Chris Evans, right? Who am I here? Plus Jalen Mayfield, all right? A lot of good, plus Zach Charbonnet, plus Giles Jackson, plus Ronnie Bell, right? All of those guys were on this 2-4 and four team last year. Had they played the rest of their schedule, the games on the schedule, they would probably went, what, 2-7? and seven? I mean, they weren't going to beat uh, any of the teams that were left. Iowa, Ohio State, et cetera. So what a turnaround by Michigan, by the staff. Harbaugh went out and got six new coaches, and obviously they are paying massive dividends with uh, with that one. So shout out to Jim Harbaugh. Uh, really excited to see what they do here coming up in the college football playoff. So that is uh, the word there. But take a look at the betting matchup for Michigan, Georgia. I'm surprised this one, right? Georgia is still favored by seven and a half points. I thought this would come down to six really quick because public perception right now, I think is actually a little towards Michigan. I talked to very few unbiased college football fans who don't say, oh yeah, I think Michigan can have a chance to win or a good chance to win. So over under, low scoring game, Georgia's still favored by, you know, I guess two scores realistically, although Michigan could go uh, for two right there. But here's the details in the game. If you got, you know, lost in the shuffle, December 31st, 7.30 Eastern. So this game will end about 11.15, 11 o'clock probably, uh, 11.30 even on the East Coast on New Year's Eve. So if you have any New Year's plans and you're a Michigan fan, cancel them now. It is the Big Ten champion, Michigan Wolverines, SEC Runner-up Georgia Bulldogs starting at 7.30, 6.30 uh, Central where I live. So uh, haven't 100% decided whether I'm going to the game or not. If I don't, it's much better to get a 6.30 game on New Year's Eve uh, for family, uh, you know, family concerns, social concerns, than it is uh, a game that will end right around midnight. Aiden Hutchinson, it is a big week for him. He's been named an All-American by almost every publication that's put him out there this week in the last three or four days. Uh, AP All-American, I expect to be part of that next week, I believe, when they announce that. And now he is the Lombardi winner, the best offensive or defensive lineman in all of college football. That is Aiden Hutchinson. Congratulations to him. And don't cut out him winning the Heisman, right? I don't know if we would see a more of a surprise, but I've been trying to take in unbiased, you know, non-Michigan related media, some national stuff, some local guys, who's voting the Heisman. And I think there's a lot of people who say, gosh, I don't know about Bryce Young. He's got good stats, but he wasn't better than Mac Jones was last year. He wasn't really better than Tua was, or these guys, I have, that feels weird to me. He wasn't better than Justin Fields was the last couple of years. So maybe this is the year where there's no great candidate, no one who's absolutely exploded on the college football. I mean, her, you know, Young needed... Uh, comeback wins or like, very close games in two of his last three games before the Georgia, you know, his last two games before Georgia, including scoring three points in 58 minutes against Auburn. Don't be surprised, but congratulations to him on winning that Lombardi trophy. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We're right below 17,500. We've really just accelerated all of these, all the subscribers recently past Michigan Podcast, past the official Michigan Athletics YouTube channel, 17,469. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Add a milestone coming up next, and I want to grow this thing to make sure we can do a show for you, you know, five days, six days a week, all off season as well as during the season.